Hello and welcome to Get Celebritized. I'm your host, Terea McGarry, and I am so excited today, as I always am excited to come to you with my show that helps you earn more so you can live more, live on purpose, live a big life, and so you can give back more to the people and causes that matter most to you. And today, the reason I am so kind of giddy, because I feel like I have a long lost sister that's about to come on this show. We have should have met many, many times over, have crossed the same pathways. She went to Marymount Manhattan College. I went to Marymount Manhattan College. She's been to Lee Strasberg. I've been to Lee Strasberg. Uh, uh, um, I've been to Herbert Burdoffs and all the places. She's a voiceover actress. She is in California now, but let me read a little bit of something about, about her because I get a little excited when I meet somebody that has done some of the same things that I have. And she comes on and she's going to tell you about her success, some some pitfalls, some things that could have stopped her and how she really overcame it all and is so successful now in what she does. So Catherine Canna is an actor, a director, a producer, an award-winning audio book narrator. She does voiceovers, beautiful, beautiful voice. She's a yoga teacher, a holistic body worker and coach. She was born in Hamburg, Germany. She became a foreign exchange student to the US for a year and returned home to Europe for further education. A uh, stint in Paris, France, and her first dream job as a flight attendant, allowing her to travel to locations far beyond her imagination. A former trained and experienced classical violinist, her talents never stop, I love her, and a jazz playing tenor saxophonist. Okay, okay. oh my. Her love of the stage, oh, she's got my heart, was there from an early age, which eventually prompted her to move to New York City, my hometown, to study acting and directing at Lee Strasberg Institute, Yale University, Marymount Manhattan College, and she has worked on stage and TV, film, voiceovers, and audio books ever since. Please help me bring, give a warm, a, a warm, warm, get celebritized welcome to the phenomenal, the beautiful, Catherine Canna. Come on up. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Oya, for such a wonderful welcome. Um, it's, you know, a pleasure to be here. And again, we talked about this earlier. We have so many things in common and I just feel so at home in your space here. So thank you so much for having me. Right back at you. You know, when you and I first spoke on the phone together, we just had all this in common. It's like, you have to come on the show because yeah. I love having creative people on the show, the actors, the producers, the, I mean, you're a musician, you're a voiceover artist, and you teach yoga. You've just got so mm -hmm. much great creative juices flowing. And I deal with a lot of women that, that are in that sector and are having maybe a hard time monetizing it or bouncing back from the pandemic. So I wanted to bring you on to really tell us where you are right now, Catherine, in your success, what you're doing that's working. And then we'll unpack it throughout the show, talk about how you made these things come to fruition despite obstacles and things that could have stopped you, like maybe the pandemic. So tell us where you are now, what you're doing and you're so excited about. I'm super, super excited about my voiceover career, my audiobook career. I um, got a new booth, a so-called whisper room that allows me to have an even better audio quality in my work. Um, and that's just one part of it. And I'm constantly learning constantly. And this is kind of like what I want to encourage people to walk away from. The pandemic kind of like put it into put us into this bubble of like, you know, a small pod and some people, including myself, you know, I was by myself a lot and that's not good for mental health. So now we hopefully, and I believe that we have taken away some good things from the pandemic in regards to, we had to upgrade our technology. We had to upgrade our way of how we learn things. And I think I've been, fortunate enough, I want to say, and also encouraged by others and the communities that I'm part of to use that time to really improve myself. Whether that is that I've been part of online learning uh, things. And mm -hmm. of course, nobody wants to hear, hear the word Zoom anymore because everybody <laughs> is so sick of it. However, <laughs> there, there is there is a benefit to it because I had access and I continue to have access um, to, for example, a, a 
a, gr a group, a, a, a self-help group, if you want to call it that, called the Narrator Alliance, um, which is a group of audiobook narrators who come together once a month just to like talk to each other, lay hey, what's going on in your life, what's going on in your life, because again, being an audiobook narrator, you're in your booth and you're in your bubble, right? Wow. And we need to continue to build our communities in any capacity, in any way, shape, or form. I love so that. that now, yeah. Yeah, Catherine, you're so talented. In your bio, I mean, you're a violinist, you're a saxophonist, you're a voiceover artist, you're an actor, director, yoga, Reiki, all this stuff. So talk to us about what you're doing right now as like your full-time career, your monetization. So the viewers can kind of get an idea on some success. And then we'll talk about how you're making everything happen because you're not in an easy industry. You know, we've got right now as we're filming, there's the writer strike going on for the actors. There's so much happening. And some of my, my clients find it hard to, to get their own business and their own self out there to gain new clients. So talk to us about how you're balancing all those different talents, which one's working the best for you right now? Well, that's a really good question. Thank you for bringing that up because I myself have gone through the, I want to say, challenges of being self-employed and trying to make ends meet and trying to improve your business. And I'm kind of like doing two sides of the coin. I'm doing my voiceover acting business and I'm also doing my holistic yoga bodywork business. And what I've learned through, you know, coming out of the pandemic, I think one of the biggest blessings that I've gotten from the pandemic is the confidence and the courage to say, you know what, how much worse can it get? Now is the time to do the ask. Do the ask. Finally step up and say, you know what, this is what I want. I want to help people. I want to be a holistic body worker. And I also want to be an audiobook narrator. And I also want to do animation and, and, and whatever the, the, I want to say the mental limitations are that we have been either conditioned ourselves with or have been conditioned to, I would say, just throw it all out. Just live your life as if there is no tomorrow because, you know, we had such a crazy last several years and it was tough mentally emotionally spiritually and now i feel like you know what i'm not gonna apologize anymore for what i want i'm gonna go for it i love it you know there are some good things that came out of that pandemic like this like we all got a crash course in audio and in zoom and in going global because i really did a lot for my business going global because we had to go wow. online I did local events before that, which I really miss, but we're getting back to it. But now I took all of that and now we have these virtual events where people from all over the world, even though we say we hate Zoom, we really do love it when it's a well-executed event or workshop. Sure. You know, I do boot camps for TV podcasting and it's really just expanded, you know, my reach and many of my clients reach without having to go out and spend the expense of location. So that's a good thing. There but, you go. Yeah, but tell us how you acquire your clients because you, you just mentioned something else you do, like you need another talent. You're an artist, <laughs> also the musician, the voiceover, the actor, the director. Oh my gosh. So do you have somebody who books your, your appointments? Do you have an agent? Do you have a manager? Talk to us a little about your professional team because that's a lot of different talents okay. that you have. So how do you work that in any single week to find clients for each expertise that you have? That's also an excellent question. I thank you for that. Um, well, I'm kind of laughing because um, I don't have a team. I am the team. And that is not to say that I don't want a team. It's expanding and eventually I will need help to organize all of that. However, I have learned that um, you can find clients in the most random places. I am not kidding you. I had a, so being an actor and being somebody who is <laughs> multi-talented, let's say, um, I used to make side income through an app called TaskRabbit, believe it or not. I've I don't know if you've that. heard of that. Yeah. Yes, I've heard of TaskRabbit. And so I had a number of women clients who would rather call me a woman into their homes to assemble furniture or put up a shelf or whatever because they weren't comfortable with having a strange guy coming to their house so That's i a had a lot point. it's a yeah 
And I, I heard that over and over again. That wasn't even my intention. I just happened to be good with tools. I don't know why. I'm a German girl. I've learned a lot of things while I was growing up. Anyway, so one of these clients, literally two years later or three years later, after I did something for her, she texts me and she's like, hey, can you help me with X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, sure. And she lives in my neighborhood, so it wasn't a big stretch. And while I was doing something, I think I put a, together a bed for her daughter or something. She tells me a little bit about what's going on in her personal life. And I said to her, because you can find clients in the most random places. I said, do you realize that I'm a yoga teacher and holistic body worker and I also do coaching because da, 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 da. And she's like, no, I had no idea. Well, long story short, she booked me for a consultation. She loved the consultation. And while we're finishing up the consultation, I said to her, because I'm getting the intuition to do the ask, and back in the day, I would have been too scared to do the ask, but now I'm not scared anymore. I'm like, what's the worst she can do? She can just say no. She can say no. She didn't. She said yes. So now I'm going to teach a workshop for her and her girlfriends. And then she loved my session so much, she hooks up her sister with me to do her chart. So one thing that it's like word of mouth. A lot you know. of times it's word of mouth, as you know. <laughs> They always say that, you know, you're not, your, your business isn't open unless your mouth is open. Talking to people, there's people everywhere. And you have not because you ask not. You just have to let people know. Yeah. And worse than it's a no or worse than it's a referral. Like, oh, not for me. But you know exactly. what? I know somebody that needs you. So that's a great point. Let people know everywhere you are because you never know where anybody's next client is, next referral. Mm -hmm. but now let's just say somebody's watching and they've always wanted to be and this is i get this a lot because i'm in the industry and tv and i'm here in atlanta i know a lot of the agents and the voiceover agents talent agents and then i know people that want to break into the business and people think that oh i'll just be a voiceover actor they think it's easy they think all they have to do is read a book i can do that i can talk they don't realize what you and i realize it is a trained skill it's yes. a part of your acting toolbox to be a voiceover actor it is not just something you just jump in and just start reading because you have a voice so on that premise of two questions one do you have a voiceover actor agent and do you suggest that and two for those listening saying i really would love to break into audiobook reading or voiceover acting how do you do that out of your own home because i know you have your own booth and many of the actors these days do it's almost a necessity now to have your own booth if you are a voiceover actor because they just want to send you the script and you just send it out well, let me be, let me begin by saying how I got started in audiobooks because it's a little bit of a unusual journey. I never never s sought it out to be an audiobook narrator. It sought me out. And you know, I always love to say, you know, when things come to you, even though you're not looking for them, pay attention because there might be something in it for you even though you may not know it for years to come. And this is exactly what happened to me. Give you a little bit of a background story. My great grandmother, who happens to have the same birthday as myself, she was living upstairs at my grandparents' house. And my, when my, um, my little brother and I would sit at her feet and listen to the large LP fairy tale stories over and over and over again. So audiobooks was already in my childhood. Um, whereas, um, yeah, it wasn't even something that I was consciously, um, you know, looking for. But I had done voiceovers in New York because I speak two languages. I speak German and I speak English. And there was a lot of work for, let's say, foreign language programs, you know, that, uh, you know, were, you know, back in the day, books on tape or recordings or CD-ROMs, whatever it was called. And that's how my name was known in New York in the German language voiceover world, so to speak. And I was found by a producer who was looking for somebody who could be a good reader and at the same time pronounce German words properly. To make a long story short, I recorded the book and it was first book out of the gate, uh, an earphones award winner, which was, I didn't even know for a long time because my antennas weren't into the audiobook world. But fast forward to somebody who says, hey, I wanna become an audiobook narrator. 
And some people may be aware of this. There is a platform called ACX. ACX, there's other ones called Find A Way. They are platforms where talent like myself can look for books that are available from rights holders to be done or to be made into audiobooks. You can audition for them and then you send in your audition. And if you're chosen, obviously you need to produce the audiobook. Now, if you're brand new, you've never done anything like that, I would say before you get started with that, um, listen to audiobooks. Just listen and see if this is really something that you might be comfortable doing. And there are so many genres in audiobooks. Some people do say, all I do is nonfiction. Self-help books, nonfiction, that's all I'm good at. I'm not interested in, in fiction. I'm not interested in creating characters and blah, blah, blah. And then there is other people who say like, oh my gosh, nonfiction is so boring. I don't want to do that. I want to create all of these characters and I have these different voices. And then I have la 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 and it's a humongous world there's so many different kinds of audiobooks and i just took a class as i said i keep taking classes all the time school's um, never out for the pro exactly and so the audio world as we all know you know it's growing and growing and growing really how many is. times would i rather listen to an audiobook than sitting down and reading it mm -hmm. i can listen to it when i'm driving you know, Especially this day and age with podcasting being so big. Totally, you know, listen, totally. They're in the car, they're at the gym. It's yes. such a great talent. So do you have an agent for this or do you just get your own bookings? Uh, in audiobook world, they're not really, you don't need an agent for audiobooks. You don't. And um, because let's be clear about finances, if you will. Like if you're a voiceover artist, and if you're under a union contract and you record a commercial, a national commercial, the money that you can make from that is way more money than doing an audiobook because you get either paid per finished hour or you get royalty share. And it's a labor of love in a lot of ways because there is a lot of work involved to create an audiobook versus going into the studio. And I've done this, going into the studio recording let's say a few hours for a commercial different takes whatever whatever and then you keep getting the money as residuals totally different ball game in regards to how much money you can make and i feel like you need to ask yourself as a voice actor or as a new person who is interested in voice acting what's my motivation you know what i what what do i love about audiobooks i love audiobooks because I feel like they're there forever, you know? They're I feel like somebody telling you a story, like when you were a kid and your parents yeah. or mom or dad would read you a story. It's so great. And with people now, like myself included, sit down and read a book. I mean, 80 day cat kicks in, the phone rings, especially when you're an adult, right? I mean, how often do we get to take a good book and go to the beach? And that's right. not something I would ever do anyway. I'm like, go to the right. beach and read a book, then go together. But <laughs> people do that. But I fall asleep. At driving the beach. is what I do. And what so many people do, oh, we spend so much time in the car, especially here in these big cities like Atlanta. I mean, 45 minute drive is nothing for us. And we could almost finish an audiobook in 45 minutes. So mm -hmm. I love them. And the voice matters too. And they're looking for all different types of voices. It's not just James Earl jo Jones totally. or, you know, an accent or soft spoken. They need all different types of voices. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? Oh, I totally agree with you. And, um, you know, I happen to listen to a lot of audiobook. It's part of my, it's part of my world, of course. And sometimes I don't particularly care for somebody's voice. And I'm mm -hmm. like, nope, cannot listen to that. And somebody else might love that voice. So there is no right or wrong. There is no better voice than others because everybody has a different flavor everybody has a different like preference you know yes. so i totally think agree. Yeah. Totally agree. yeah so i love that you gave those those two websites it was the acx and what was the other one find a way find a way and that would, that would be a good place for people to go to kind of start yes. seeing what's out there and if you go to acx for example there is also a, a button i believe are they they redesigned the website so don't hold me to it if i tell you it's on a different location it used to be on the bottom of the page but maybe it's different now um there's a button called acx university where they teach you how to actually produce an audiobook oh wonderful that's so, so cool 
And again, there's also many, many audiobook narrators on TikTok. Um, there are people on Discord, you know, who do live readings, etc. So there is a lot of information on how to do it. And I think it's a great idea for those who really, you know, do have a skill, a talent, or maybe want to take the time to build that skill, not just come in just thinking, okay, well, I can just read the book. Really know that it is a skill set, but it's a learned skill set. You know, I, I went to acting school. I did acting and soap and all that. I wasn't born. We could say born to do it because we wanted to. We had that bug. We wanted to get good at it. But we have to go to school. When I had an agent and I was an actress and did movies and all this cool stuff, my agent always told us well, she would not keep us on if we weren't currently in acting classes. We were never allowed to leave and be not in act unless we're on set or doing something. And even your biggest, you know, actors, the Reese Witherspoons, the all the Meryl Streep's, they love acting classes. Yeah. You're always gaining new work. Because mm -hmm. I remember I was told, and it's so true, school is never out for the pro. And the minute you think you arrive at anything, whether again, whether you're a chiropractor, massage therapist, realtor, financier, oh, you are always learning. You know, my son-in-law is a chiropractor and he's actually going to so I think he's there today. Every single year, it's a three-day, certain amount of hours. You yep. have to take more classes because there's always innovation. There's always things to Absolutely. learn. Nurses, doctors. So why not actors? So it's not like you're going because you don't know anything. It's you're going because you do know something and you're going to get even more out of it. Exactly. And, you know, I can't, I can't emphasize that uh, more because... You know, in the audiobook world, there is the APA, the American Publisher Association, that has a conference every year. This past, this year, it was in New York City in March. And um, it's a getting together of the publishers and the narrators. So there's a lot of opportunity to meet the people who could hire you. So that's what I'm saying. You don't need the agent to be the middle person because it's okay. a beautiful, beautiful community, too, I have to say. And I think that's great what's happened too with, uh, what do I want to say, virtual, because I remember even right before the pandemic, you know, my agent was talking about, you know, even for auditions now with the agents, they still have them submit these online virtuals. Now, people are doing auditions virtually online and sending mm -hmm. in their their sizzle reel, their actor's reel, their mm -hmm. audition, then they send it back and say, you know, read this script, send it back to us all online until they get to that next step. They want you to come in. You have to fly to LA or, yes, or maybe you're in Atlanta, New York. But all the preliminary is done via, you know, the internet. So we really yeah. do have to be savvy with the internet. It's not that difficult. You know, we're all teachable and coachable. I always say we're all potty trained. We learned the <laughs> skill, you know, we can do that. We can get trained on anything. So it's yeah. just, it seems so big when we haven't, you know, had the coaching on it yet or nobody showed mm -hmm. us how, but just like any job, you go in for the first day, you're overwhelmed. Oh my gosh. But by, you know, a couple of weeks in, you're running the place, whatever it is. So I think yeah. it's, it's really a good thing that maybe some of those people that are watching saying, wow, this might be my moment to start. I know I'm going to PodFest in January, 2024, because mm -hmm. that's where the podcasters get together. And yeah. it's in Orlando. You got to be with your peers. You've yes. got to rub shoulders because we all do want to collaborate. It's not competition. There's room at the top for everyone because we all bring different DNA to the table, to our industry. And just to kind of like reiterate what I said earlier, that is so, so important because as I said, during the pandemic, when we were all kind of like locked away in our own bubbles and, you know, all we had was the virtual, it becomes absolutely necessary to be together in person. It's mm -hmm. actually not good for your nervous system to only do this computer stuff. It really isn't. And I think, um, you know, I also work with children and I, and I, that's a sort of like a labor of love of mine. Um, I work with children and I see that sometimes they are not, uh, I want to say equipped with certain social skills that my generation, our generation was equipped with because we were always outside. We were always playing with each other. We were always in person. There was no cell phones. There was no computers. There was nothing. We had to remember to have tactile community versus this two-dimensional screen community. Do you know what I mean? So it's important to go to real life in-person events. 
So on that note, because this is another part of your expertise, is the skill set of yoga, Reiki, healing. Talk to us about if somebody has still, you know, some anxiety, it's not as social as they used to be. Maybe they're sitting at home too much and they're an entrepreneur, which sometimes means solopreneur. Talk to us about how we can better our health and our nervous system. Uh, what are some of the tips that you give your clients, whether you're teaching them yoga or healing in these consultations? Give us some of that insight now to help them be better at not just their business, but at their whole well-being. Yes. Thank you so much for that segue. And I think they're completely related, um, our business and our health. And what I mean by that is if my mental health, if my nervous system is taxed vis-a-vis stress, anxiety, depression, because I'm spending too much alone, for example, or I have been, you know, only in a virtual job, I'm working from home, I don't have colleagues, I don't have, you know, a water cooler to walk over or the cafeteria to have lunch with my colleagues, you know, that kind of like has a negative impact on our mental health, for sure. And what I say to my students, my clients, something that I had to learn, you know, myself, which is to breathe properly. Literally, the breath is the king of the mind. A lot of people breathe so shallowly. And when you don't breathe deeply, and maybe you do it every so often when you go into your yoga class or maybe you go to the gym and you know you do some cardio work and you feel like oh my god yes i've been really breathing well well there is more than that to proper breath work and how i teach my students um and also you can work with your hands there are wonderful things called mudras that you can put your hands in um different positions to affect certain energy lines in your body. And some people who are familiar with acupuncture or Chinese medicine, or let's say Tai Chi, you may have heard the word meridians. So you can work with your hands to affect the meridian lines and they in in turn affect your organs, affect how there is a flow of energy. Secondarily, a big, big health issue nowadays is that we sit too much. I have to remind myself to get out of my chair because when I'm in my booth recording, I'm sitting because I sit there for hours. I don't do that standing. Fortunately, a lot of people have understood, hey, you know, maybe I should get a standing desk or, hey, maybe I should get one of those little treadmills under my standing desk so I'm not constantly sitting. So the consciousness has been shifting and that's a good thing. I'm glad you said that because I consciously uh, get up, you know, the pandemic, I was in solitary because I only have one lung and lining around my heart's been removed. Oh, so everybody was so like concerned, you know, don't let mom get, you know, COVID. So I was, you know, I went immediately, we were in like this, you know, bubble. But then it's as it started to get longer and longer, I realized, wow, I just spent a year sitting, doing all this, you know, recreating mm-hmm. everything online. I realized, okay, this isn't good. And I started hearing people like yourself, Catherine, saying, sitting in a desk job is the new smoking. It could take yes. time off your life. So I consciously since then get up all the time. Even if I stand up and I just move around while I'm working or I consciously stop myself at least every hour to get up and walk around, walk around. I have yeah. four dogs. So walking my dog, just yeah. get out, get circulating. And it has to become a conscious effort to not just sit there. It's probably not even enough that I do, but it's better than just, it used to be like literally 16 hours go by and I'm still sitting at the computer. It was just, you know, and you can't do that. And I have to consciously get out of the house too. And even if it's going to the store, running some errands to not just be in that, that old pandemic isolation, because I work online mostly. So do you know anything about, um, I know um, Jarek Robbins, Tony Robbins' son is a real great mentor of mine. I just love him and his wife, Amanda. They talk about tapping. What is tapping and do you do anything like that? I've heard of tapping, you know, different places on yes, your I've face. Heard of you. They you know? do that. I don't know how it works. Yes. And, you know, I don't know enough to be talking about it, but it makes total sense to what I just said, working with the meridians, working with your hands. That's what made me think and of it. Acupuncture. There are certain points on your body where wherever you do that, and a friend of mine actually has done that. And I know that people who are, 
um, perhaps dealing with addiction situation or or anxiety. I've seen um, some online content about teaching children those tapping exercises. You know, I think it's great. I love working with energy. I feel like it's it's a uh, you know, I, I am in, in a way, I'm a, such a nature girl, even though I live in the city and I have lived in cities my whole life. But, you know, I remember being with my grandparents by nature, pastures and things, you know, I feel very much that we all need it. But I live at the beach here in L.A., so I always can take a beach walk. So yeah. that You've done some nice walking trails, too, on those do, mountains. I do, brothers I do. take me. You know, my brother and I, bike, whatever. Right. My brother and I were born and raised in New York City, and I always felt most at home in Central Park. That was our backyard. Yeah. That's where we spent so much time. You know, my Marymount High School is right across the street from the Met, yeah. so I saw a lot of the Met being, you know, built with the different exhibits, and we would we'd have our gym class in Central Park. So that was the only backyard I knew, except when we went away for weekends to Connecticut. But I knew, I guess, your body just yearns to be in nature, be around trees. And you kind of gravitate towards whether it's the ocean. You know, my brother in LA, he loves the water mm -hmm. because the water is very healing. So, you know, I see how we're kind of drawn to these things. It's important. Get out of the house, get into nature. Whether you live in the city, you live in the suburbs, there's something you can find, a walking mm -hmm. trail, something no matter where you are. So that's no, great. Was, so let's talk. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was just saying, as we're kind of wrapping up, coming to that at the end of the segment, uh, talk to us a little bit more about how people can get a hold of you. What pain you can solve for them now? We know you're a voiceover, you're a musician, you do the healing. Where is your sweet spot now? If you could work with anyone, maybe anybody that's watching the show now, who do you most want to work with? What does that look like? And what pain do you solve for them? And how can they get a hold of you? Thank you for asking that. Well, as a voice artist, of course, you know, I have a, a website, katherinecannavoice.com. Um, that is my first and last name, the word voice.com. And then I also have this other website, which talks about and uh, teaches about the healing work, the breath work, the charts that I do, et cetera, et cetera. So depending on what your needs are, what you'd like me to work with you on, I can work with you in voiceover, narration, commercials, audiobooks, anything. And or uh, be the light.com where there are options to get a chart done, figure out how do I tick? Why do I tick this way? And it's not astrology. And that's the interesting part. It is super, super deep. And it gives you an understanding of why am I constantly doing that? And why are the holidays always so hard for me? Well, I can tell you why, because I can calculate that in your chart. Or I can do a virtual healing session. If you say, you know, I know I love this healing work, that energy body work is amazing, but I don't live in LA. And I, even if I did live in LA, maybe I live on the other side of town and that's way too far. Well, guess what? I have a solution for you because I was trained in virtual harmonium healing. So I can do sessions with anybody anywhere in the world. All you need is a stable phone or Zoom connection or FaceTime, doesn't matter. Zoom is a good thing. We can use it for a good exactly. purpose. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but even if you don't do Zoom, like my mother wouldn't be doing, be able to do that, but I could do a phone call. You know, I could do a WhatsApp phone call so it doesn't cost anything. I could do a FaceTime, cost doesn't cost anything, or a, a WhatsApp video. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I think there are so many opportunities that allow us to work with one another. And I also do consulting work. I have a client that I've been working with for over a year and a half. And uh, actually I have two women that I wanted to mention. One of them, super stressed out mom, mother of three, newly married to her second husband, just moved across the country, bought a house, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was intense. And she and I were doing, uh, she gave me actually a testimony. She said, you know, I am so much more um, I want to say gathered, if that makes any sense. You yeah. know, you mentioned ADHD before, like anybody who has ADHD and knows what that means, it is a challenge sometimes to stay on track, to do all the tasks you're supposed to do. And if you have so many things and you're bombarded, level of stress is high, your cortisol goes up, your blood pressure goes up, et cetera, et cetera. That's not a good thing. But, and I can do sessions in the virtual healing work and i can also do consulting work coaching work one-on-one -on -one over zoom 
or phone or what have you. Sure. So it's super easy to reach. I love me. that. I love that. Can you tell us your either your most chat without saying names, but a most challenging client that you got and the results that came, or the most maybe the most memorable, a really cool thing that happened when somebody came to you for one of these sessions or any one of these particular um, modalities that you do? Mm. I'm like going through my mental Rolodex and if oh, I yeah. use the word Rolodex, you know how old I am. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know um, where you're going. I remember um, Rolodex. You know, I've worked with so many people, but I, just as you were asking me that question, um, I did a house call once for a Reiki session, and this was before I learned harmonium healing. Um, and she lived in, well, this was in New York City. And the reason why she pops up in my mind is because she had severe scoliosis. And it was very difficult for her to get on my table. And um, it really gave me this beautiful, I want to say, moment of me stepping away from what I think it should be like and just allowing them to show me what they needed with the abilities that they had physically. And I adjusted to this um, person, to this client, and had the most wonderful experience that was very humbling for both of us, to be honest. I And this is why I love doing what I do. It is never a one fits all situation ever. It is really a moment of like, let me eliminate any expectation and any, um, what's the word, assumptions about whatever it's supposed to be like, but really be in the moment and breathe and let them inform you what they need from you and then what you can give them. And honestly, when I compare myself to my younger self, I feel so much better now having gone through a lot of hardship, like we all have, you know, that's part of life. You go through hardship, you have heartbreaks, you have deaths, you lose someone, you break up, you know, you may have financial uh, havoc in your whatever career might go down the toilet. We all experience it. That's part of being alive. But, and what I love about it is how we respond. Now that we have experienced that, do I have a negative mindset about it and feel like, oh, blah, 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 you know, the world is so unfair? Or do I say, oh, thank you. I needed that lesson. I needed to learn that about myself. I needed to become more confident through my hardship. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, when people say, you know, why me, why me? You know, when I got cancer and I've been through so much and my dad was murdered, my, you know, went through all the cancers, every time I lose somebody, I don't ever, I've never said, why me? I always think, why not me? Who am I not to have the struggles of the world? You know, we're all in this world together. And we're all going to have all sorts of struggles. And like you said, losses and stress. So I'm never saying, why not me? You know, I'd be more concerned if it was like nothing bad ever happened. Because there's what? always things that happen. It's how you relate. You either have the victim mentality or the, okay, this is happening. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Be that problem solver, that solution person. Doesn't mean we don't grieve for you know in appropriate times, of course, and we feel all the feelings, all the emotions, but not that victim mentality where it's like, oh, why me? It's always me and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, this is happening. Have your cry, deal with it. And Learn how to overcome it so you can help others too. Because I think if we all share experiences and we can say, hey, you know what, Catherine, I went through something very similar. Mm -hmm. You know what helped me? And we're able to help each other because we can relate to different things. Right. And I think, you know, I think it takes a village just to raise people, not just children. It's we yeah. all continue to need each other, not just under 18, but we always are needing people. Like you're saying, get out of the house. We can't just live in a bubble and be alone. So with that, before we, we close up, what is one piece of advice you'd love to give? Um, let's just go with this. Women, especially, we're very emotional. We're mm -hmm. very passionate. You know, we wear a lot of hats. We're trying to be mom, maybe wife, maybe single mom, being an entrepreneur, using our gifts, you know, living our life, trying to make meaning and purpose out of it. There's so much. We're so, we're just the heart of the family. So what advice could you give a woman today that is feeling stressed, 
maybe lonely, maybe feeling, maybe losing some hope. If you could give her one piece of really good advice or something tactical she could use moving forward, even if she never is able to reach out to you personally, what would that be? Oh, that's such a loaded question. There are so many thoughts that I have right now. Um, I have to be honest, if it weren't, if it wasn't for my sisters, my girlfriends, my, you know, literal sister and all of my soul sisters that I've met through my lifetime. And I kid you not, even in the darkest of days that I've had in my life, I've always had the wherewithal to reach out to one person, one girl, even if it's only a text message, hey, I'm thinking about you. And here's the trick that I've learned over the years. Um, sometimes it's not a trick, it's just a habit that I've created for myself. Sometimes when I feel like I need nurturing and I need somebody who give me some confidence or support, instead of waiting for it and then not getting it perhaps, and then getting frustrated about not getting it or thinking I'm alone, I do the opposite. Instead of waiting for it to come to me, I give it. I give it first. I reach out to a friend of mine and say, hey, I'm thinking about you. That's all you have to say. I'm thinking about you. Or just send a heart emoji or like this emoji. Just send something. And guess what? The more you do it, the more you get back. Mm -hmm. It's like a universal law. Give and you shall receive. That's how it goes do. around. Comes around. What? Being what goes around comes around. I love that being proactive and paying it forward. Is, I, you know, yes. volunteer. I mean, I currently yes. volunteer in LA um, at a food distribution center that was founded by a woman in the pandemic. It's called Nourish LA. It's a wonderful concept because so many groceries in this country are being thrown away because they're close to or on the expiration date. And guess what? How many people are going hungry in this world? How many people are going hungry in this country? And yeah. so she started this program and I've been part of it for the last year. And I have to tell you, not only is it on the physical level, very smart because you're taking a resource and you're just redistributing it before it goes in the landfill. So, hey, there's a need and there's a resource. Boom, I'm gonna make the connection. Everybody wins. But what's even more important than that is the mental health that comes with it. The dopamine hit that all of us who volunteer there get every single Sunday or whenever there's other times and places where we do this, we feel so good. You walk home, you go home. Yes, we are also allowed to receive because there is such an abundance of food being given away. But it's also this, hey, I did something good today. I made okay. people smile. I, for sometimes, speak to people who are so lonely that don't have anybody to smile at them or talk to them or say, hey, I like your shirt. You look amazing today. Or recognize them the next week and the next week. We are each other's keepers. I'm not mm -hmm. kidding when I say that. It's so important. You hit the nail on the head as far as being a perfect match for this show where it's earn more, live more, and give back more. We get as the giver so much more benefit than even the, the one who is receiving because we just it just does our heart so good to help. And I've always said, you know, if you're looking for camaraderie, you're looking for more joy, get your mind off of you and your problems and go help others. Yeah. You know, just go and do, go give, go volunteer, and you'll be so surprised how that just does uplift you. you you never know who you're going to meet, but it's more about just getting out there and getting your mind off of everything you think is going wrong in your life and just go help others. And yep. I think we're just born to do that. When we do that, we're fulfilling some wonderful need that God put in, into us to For be sure. with each other. To mm -hmm. you know, That's why I love my favorite book in the Bible. Favorite story is Noah's Ark, because even the animals came to the ark two by two and four by four. You know, God could have totally, you know, directed them, just everybody go and one by one, all just stomp all over each other to get to the boat. But it was, a, it was two by two. They went in pairs. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to go through this life, having those BFFs, having those yes. you know, four great friends and people going to destinations together. Hey, come on, I'm going, come with me. 
It's yeah. that friendship camaraderie, I think, that's pointed to us and into the animal kingdom as well. You know, I see the family dynamic of many of the animal species. Some, like penguins, mate for life with the same spouse, you know, the same mate. There's just so many otters, and I'm just a huge animal lover. And I just see they have no problem with it. They don't, you know, just live alone in solitude. They even know that they need each other. So yeah. what makes us think that we can just live alone totally mm -hmm. virtual and not need companionship and help because life always seems worse when we try to make it on our own. Yeah. So with that, Catherine, my last question for you. Yeah. That I love to ask everybody because part of my, my branding, what I do is helping people live a legacy. I had live your legacy TV, live your legacy summits. So I love asking this question and Catherine, that's what is your legacy? How do you most want to be remembered by your family and your friends when you do take that last breath, tell us what your legacy you want it to be. Um, oh, I'm almost getting emotional when you ask me this question. Um, but it reminds me of a thing that my mom said to me not long ago, let's say maybe four or five years ago. And I have to say, you know, I've lived away from my mother. I've lived away from my family for a long time mm -hmm. because I'm an immigrant in the United States. My family's in Germany, but of course we're in touch and I visit, etc. But one of the last visits, my mom said to me, Catherine, you know what you're good at? <laughs> and I was like, no, mom, do yeah. tell me, what am I good at? Because it's kind of like funny that she would some say something like that. And she says to me, you're a connector. You see two people who don't know each other, but you think there might be something in that for them, either per personal or professional or whatever, and you make the connection. And that's actually very true. I am a connector. I may, you know, say to one person, oh my gosh, I know a person who does da 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 And, you know, somehow I would love to be remembered. And this is also why I chose the name for my website. I want to be remembered as somebody who came to this world and shone some light. Whatever you do with it is on you. I'm just here to serve, to shine some light, to give you a connection, to make a connection, to bring people together or to inspire somebody to change their life because they've been in a rut for so long. And yeah, I think that's that's what I would love to have people remember me as. Catherine, I love that. And the more you talk, the more I really realize you and I were probably separated at birth because, you know, I, my mom said the same thing to me. And I know that's one of my gifts is being that connector, that matchmaker. I was a love matchmaker for a while as a job. Oh, wow. Just, it just came so naturally. And I do that naturally too. Like, do you know so-and-so what you need to know? And you're making that connection. Yeah. Well, um, look at what you're doing now. You're connecting all of us. I love doing that. So I just think this is so great. I'm so honored to be able to get to know you more. And mm. that's one reason I also love my, this show gets celebritized because I meet the coolest people and we take these relationships off the air as well. When you really click with somebody, it doesn't mm -hmm. happen with everybody, but after getting to know people when it's on your, when they're on your show, you get to see all these really good juicy pieces of them. Mm -hmm. Say, wow, we need to do more together. Or you, you see this inside. We need to just be friends or let's have coffee or next time you're in LA or Atlanta and you build these bonds with these yeah. people you've never met. If it wasn't for having a show where you can really connect together and with, the audience as well. So thank you so much. I know this is the only beginning for you and I. Yeah. And you've given such great insight and enlightenment to the viewers. I want to thank you so much for that. I want everybody to know be the light is just the letter B, like boy, yes. the light. Dot com. You can check out mm -hmm. everything about Catherine there. See all of her social media. Get that, you know, consultation discovery call and just follow her. Because if you need more peace, tranquility, and just more smiles and balance, or if you're trying to be break into the voiceover industry Absolutely. and you want to do that, connect with her. She's so approachable. Thank you, Catherine, so much. Thank last so words much. go to you. Give us the last the last word from you. I just wanted to give props to you for doing what you do, because I think it's so important. You and I met on this app where we were just, you know, starting to make phone calls to network with one another. And I think that's what we're good at. And mm -hmm. let's use that as women. We're talkers. We share. And this is I'm not trying to, like, not encourage the men. I love to encourage men to do the same. And it was actually founded by a man to make those connections. And I want to do a shout out to my neighbor, Dominic Detana, because he was the one who actually invited me to be on this app because I did some consulting work with him. And he's like, oh, my gosh, you should monetize that. And <laughs> here we are. 
Here thank we are. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for oh, thank you. inviting me to be here. It's a, It's been a pleasure and honor and an inspiration. And I can't wait for more. Thank you so much, Catherine. And we'll give a shout out to Jason R. Hill. He's the founder of the OWL app. Yep. I'll put my link in the description. You can use my code Araya and get $10 in free cash to call anybody you want. And Catherine, I met there. We're not going to explain how it works on this show, but Jason was on my podcast. He was on this show. Exactly. He explain how all this works. So y'all just search out the OWL app, O-W-W-L-L. You won't be sorry. You'll meet amazing people like me and Catherine. Right. right there. You can actually pick up the phone and call us. And who knows what synergy will happen. So thank you again, Catherine, so much. I already adore thank you. you so to come. And this is Ray McGarry signing off from Get Celebritized, where I hope to help you all earn more, live more, and yes, give back more. It'll make your life so much more enriched. Thank you for being here. Until next time. See you later. Bye, everyone. Bye.